we're coming back to the couch now. Uh, Eric, earlier you had said you had kind of made a comparison to what's going on there and, and what's happening here in New York City. Can you reset with that? Yeah. Um, so you're taking a, a law enforcement tool uh, out of their hands. You're, you're in New York, what's, what's going on? One of the first things Mayor de Blasio did here was he said, we're going to pull a stop and frisk, which means, you know, in, in deference to the Fourth Amendment, uh, unreasonable searches and seizures, they said it was unreasonable to profile uh, African Americans or anyone for that matter and just say, hey, what are you doing? Let me, let me see your ID. Let me talk to you. They, they pushed back on that. Problem is, that was finding a lot of crimes. Some say just misdemeanor crimes. Point is, why are we pulling law enforcement tools out of their hands why are we taking that away this this should be a, a test case for New York City or any major city or any city for that matter this uh, this office was targeted in 2006 mm -hmm. it was targeted in 2011 a couple of weeks ago it was targeted saying there's a credible threats against this office they put cops in front of the office yeah but they put cops with handguns maybe some didn't even have handguns there are reports that mm -hmm. some didn't even have a gun these guys walked up heavily armed and blew away 12 people walked out of there unscathed here's the point there's been a very serious push from the left saying let's not over military our cops. Mm -hmm. That should put an end to that discussion right now. We should over military. We should continue to do that. One last thought. I'm sorry. No, after 9/11, I was in the building in 9/11. Right after 9/11, there was the, the New York City cops. What they did was they, they did these shows of force. Heavily armed mm -hmm. cops would walk around mm -hmm. buildings. They would show up anywhere. Twelve cop cars would line up. They get out with the, with the full body gear, with the full with the you know with the, the machine guns, right, just to show the bad guys they are there. Mm -hmm. That's kind of gone away. Maybe it's time to bring it back. You it's live not in a intimidating. State, though? No, I, mean, I don't want thing... it's not a police state. Okay, but it's let me, a safe state. Uh, let me just make one point about the militarization militarization of police because I've always been very pro law enforcement and I think that cops should have all sorts of tools and technology, but they shouldn't see us as the enemy. You know, we're not the enemy. We are not people they're hunting or combating. I didn't feel and, like and that was an enemy. Okay, to, but that's to a the difference the between the military mm -hmm. and the police. And if you talk to police officers, they'll agree there has to be a difference. There has to be a line. Your police department should not look like your armed forces. So and and that's, that's the point of that. And I don't want cops walking around heavily armed. And, and right. that, that's true. So, that's true. Well, but it, but and it, I understand I after 9 11. We are being hunted. Yeah. We are being hunted. Okay? ISIS has made it very clear. These guys are making it very clear when they enter that newspaper's offices. Yeah. We're here to get you. We are being hunted. So, how would you like for us to be protected? What message do you want to send? I think the best thing that Americans can do is arm themselves. Uh, me too. Can we do a high five? But you can't do that in the city. You're not even. It, do you, it's this. Yeah, it, yeah I live in DC city. where it's really, really you know difficult. To New York cops. It's New York City. New York cops. I don't feel like they look at me as the enemy. I feel like New York cops. Of all the cops in this country, you can go up to Kennedy, them and have a you're conversation. You're not a bad guy, though. That's if I'm a, a bad a guy, point. I see a, a, hel a, a heavily armed cop on the corner, I may decide not to do the bad thing I was thinking about doing. Sometimes well, bad guys don't look like bad guys. Well, right, and that's, that's my that's question about here. these guys, because if we know they were speaking unaccented French and they had, you know, ski masks on, do we even know what color they were, what the tone of their skin was? I mean, what if they didn't look like typical bad guys? as we define them when we think about terror groups. Well, that's why this issue in New York is so important, because if there is a police force in the nation that has figured out better than any other force how to blend in with its citizenry and become part of the population and not be the enemy, it's mm -hmm. the NYPD. Yeah. I mean, they are an exemplary uh, uh, organization of individuals. Um, that is so petrifying that you read out, Harris, that, that, or reported, that they read out people's mm -hmm. names. Yeah. And assassinated them, basically taking role. I mean, that to me is so scary. But that's scary. I mean, that's why Charlie Hebdo is 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 so uh, incredibly brave. Because mm -hmm. even though they've been targeted for all these years, they're still brave enough right. to stand out there. Uh, yep.